Well, here we are back at it, back at Home Theater 2.0 after a two week delay due to COVID. So let's see what's happened. So while I was sequestered away, a couple things happened. I got a couple new boxes that came in. Uh, the two tall ones over on the right are from GIK, G-I-K. I think that's the panels for the ceiling, which I changed actually from the video I did strategizing what my new treatment plan was gonna be. I didn't actually go for the 242 panel. I work with GIK and they actually didn't recommend the 242s for the ceiling. They recommended a different product called their grid fuser. It's basically like a three dimensional diffusion. They come in these essentially two by two foot square pieces. I'll open them up and we'll take a look, but they're gonna be all over the, all over the ceiling essentially. more boxes from Amazon. We'll dig into those. Got all the Focal 1000 series ready to go. And of course the boxes for the, the big towers. As you saw, we brought the, the screen down. There's one of our new kitties. Barely fit down. I suppose we could have taken it out of the box and, and so on if we needed to, but my wife and I, we got the job done. Still have my four Aria 906 bookshelf pairs uh, up for sale. I've talked to, I don't even know how many people about those things, but thought I had maybe sold at least three of the four or all four, but not yet. I did sell the, the Electra Center, which was nice. That's gone. And the Emotiva amp, I shipped both of those out just in these last couple of days. Let's take a look in the room. I was just in here cleaning up a little bit from the last vlog. It was basically just left. As I fell ill and sequestered away, I did move the monster base traps on their stands to the back wall here. I don't know that I like it as much, honestly. I think it looked a little cleaner with those on the walls, but I also have a lot of extra light going on in here. It's very bright. It changes the character of a room like this when all the lights are on and you, it shines light on, on some of the maybe imperfections or whatnot, particularly in my paint job. Uh, versus when the lights are dimmed, nominally speaking, using the room for theater or gaming. I don't think we put the lights past like 15% brightness, but they, those fit. They'll, they'll work okay. I might need to jigger the legs a little bit. They're, they're maybe leaning forward a, a tad. We'll see. I can make some tweaks there. I'm still kicking myself. I, I, I have no clue. I think I alluded to this before. I have no clue why I didn't make the curtain fully centered on the wall versus covering the door. I need like another six inches or something, a curtain on the right hand side. I think I might reach back out to the to the seamstress that made the curtains and and remedy that mistake, get that fully symmetrical. Because the other thing I'm kind of afraid of back here is I thought if I go with two subwoofers, right, we'd be putting one down there, kind of middle, mid front wall under the screen, and then a second one mid back wall which would split in between these two panels. But if those panels are not quite, but almost to the edge of the curtains, there's not room for much of a subwoofer in between, in between those two. We'll see how it shakes out. I might, I might shift those panels further apart if I need to, if a sub does go back there, who knows, maybe I'll push those panels together straight side by side and leave the two subwoofers up front at the one quarter and three quarter points on the wall. We've got some options, but. So I still have the towers in here. I've been slowly, slowly, slowly working my way into the idea for myself and my wife that, that we might want to have these in the living room. And I spent a whole bunch of time over my COVID isolation, looking at options for kind of enhancing the hi-fi music experience of the living room, but I still have them hooked up. Um, I'll get to why in a second. There's the carpet, the black carpet that's going to go all on this front floor area 
kind of set this set this open carpet space apart with the different color tone, get more of the light um, reflecting down off of the screen kind of absorbed, should help anchor, improve some of the performance of the screen and so on. So I haven't taken that down yet. I need to do that soon. That is up for sale, Stuart SEMA, 135 inch, 16 by nine, perfect shape. But I'll be taking that down and getting to work on some other parts back there. Let's go take a look in the at the rack. Is there something new in the rack? We got these two new cats. I always got to make sure to close the doors behind me. They steal things. They get into things and so on. So there's our new friend, Anthem AVM70. Um, I just put it in last night. I had it open for a little while per the videos and some of the, the unboxing and the UI deep dive. I, I did some of those um, before and then it's just been sitting here in the room. But I, I pulled my Marantz AV7704 out and I, I got this guy in. So if you're curious how the Anthem rack mount fits in AVM70, there you go. There's the two ears on either side. And then the chin piece, it makes it a full 4U, full 4U height. Otherwise, it's kind of like a three and a half on its own. I was able to finagle that thing in there all by myself, <laughs> thankfully, without dropping or breaking it. One thing I don't really like, I was very disappointed about, is there was a film over the panel. You can see how glossy and nice that panel looks. But if you take a look at this A right here, pulling the film off pulled some of the lettering off. So that's kind of lame. And then of course the parasounds are set up. So I spent a little while last night, it's hard to get the anthem in the pick, but I spent a while last night actually setting this up. I only have the two, I do have the two towers hooked up. And the reason is because I want to go ahead and play with Arc a little bit really quick. I kind of want to measure those towers on Arc. I want to run and just kind of see what frequency response and so on they were given in the room. So I am going to do that before I take the towers out pretty quickly. So I've got that room set up as the main zone, two speakers. I've got the zone two living room set up. I've got all the triggers configured properly. So the, the sub amps fire off of one trigger. The A31 fires off of another trigger. And then the A52s are chained off of the third trigger. Um, it worked. It worked great so far configuring this thing. I actually they, they pushed out a nice big software update Which was awesome. There's some really really nice UI improvements that they made. I'll, I'll cover that separately in another video, but um, I was really pleased with the way the the UI changes look and what they did That was that was definitely a positive positive. and then we just got a bit of a mess Going on in here. I got cables everywhere things disconnected. I got to get my speaker cables ready to go for the in walls Get some longer ones ran where they need to be pull out the ones that were too short i'm looking at some other cable options and stuff as well as part of the upgrade i've been seeing a lot of people reference mogami mogami cables and so i might go ahead and and replace my mono prices one of the things that i fight with consistently in my setup and something with this rack is there's a lot of electrical noise the pc i was actually getting noise out of the kaleidoscape you could hear the hard drive basically spinning up through the speakers. I thought maybe the new Parasounds and the new Anthem would be more uh, isolated to that effect. Honestly, they're really not. I'm not really even sensing any any kind of difference. So something in here is making electrical noise. I, I mean, I've got the PC isolated on a Hum X. You can kind of see it through the, through the plugs there. The Kaleidoscape, I also put it on a Hum X to try to cut down try to isolate some of the ground noise or, or whatever that's being experienced there. But this, this is something I need to chase down more completely. And it's something I want to talk about in some future videos as well. This is definitely a pain. It, it, right, right now I've got it where the noise isn't that bad, but I would really like to have a quiet noise floor out of my speakers and uh, in both of my zones. And I'm just not sure why I, I don't have that, especially with this quality of equipment and